All right. Um, you ready? Pretty good. All right. Really, really good win for us. Thought we did a lot of uh, really nice things tonight. Um, shared the ball. We really passed the ball. We had 17 assists uh, out there. We had 12 at halftime on 13 baskets. Um, would have had more assists. We just couldn't make a jumper in the second half, uh, which is kind of who we turn into sometimes. But. In the last seven or eight minutes, our offense was terrific. Our execution, our half-court offense was great, sharing the ball, getting to the foul line, spacing, coming out of timeouts and scoring, or getting fouled. We did a lot of great things. Couldn't get rid of them. Our ball screen defense wasn't good enough to start the second half. Um, knew it was going to come to that. We didn't guard it well. We weren't as prepared as we needed to be for that. And then they made a lot of big shots. They made a lot of big shots. And uh, they're playing a little bit looser. Uh, and I was really proud of our guys. We could have really tightened up, but we didn't. We played with great poise. It starts with Anthony, and Sticks was phenomenal tonight. One, one rebound short of 2020, so he was at another level. So really, just proud of the guys. Really good win for us. Questions? The Jack Lynch Law Group's successes have resulted in many distinguished awards, including Best Personal Injury Trial Law Firm USA, Maryland's Personal Injury Attorney of the Year twice, and Super Lawyers designation every single year. We succeed because we're willing to try cases, and insurance companies know it. That's why their claim reps often grumble they pay us more in settlements than any other lawyers. You deserve a great lawyer. If you've been hurt in a car, truck, or train crash, call 855-BIG-DOG-1. This is Mason Viner. Listen to the Young Terps podcast on CapitalSportsBlog.com and TerpTalk.com, the number one rated Maryland sports podcast. And only five turnovers, which is terrific. Um, I guess just in general, how did you feel about the team's overall response to such an emotional win the other day, yeah. and then also the response to when Northwestern cut it to four? Yeah, I, I, I thought we played well. I mean, this team had records down 10 with five to play in their building. Records is pretty good. And so... I thought we defended really well the first half. Start of the second half, we weren't very good and at 19 points in the first eight minutes at 25 and a half time. So then we were good again. So I thought we responded great. Um, and I, I, like the way, I like the way we responded when they cut it to four. I thought offensively we were terrific. Um, yeah, I, I went with a lineup where our matchups were better. Um, and it really helped us. We had a stretch there where we were really good. You know, we missed front of a one and one. We missed a layup. They had some tough shots. There could have been more. But when you're one for 13 from three and probably 10 of them are wide open, it's not going to get a you know it's not going to be a 20 point win. And so, it's who we are. We figured it out. We didn't panic and we played with great poise. Yeah, Cell had seven assists yeah. tonight. He had six assists against Michigan yeah. State. How much has he evolved as a, as a passer this season? Yeah, it's crazy. And, you know, it used to be three or four turnovers and one assist, and he just turned into this player. He's just totally bought in to what he has to do. And they don't guard him, and he still figures out how to get in the paint and make plays for himself and make plays for everybody else. So he's a really confident kid right now. He's in a really good place. And, um, yeah, I mean, it, it's, it's really cool. You know, because you coach guys to watch him get better and to see what he's done. You know, last year at this time, I was like, dang, I don't know if this is going to work. He kept turning the ball over, live ball turnovers, and then see where he is a year from now. What he's doing is, is, is really good. Mark, you mentioned the 17 assists and 12 in the first half. What impressed you most about the team's unselfishness offensively? Well, we really did it in practice yesterday. We were great. We shared the ball yesterday in practice. Like, Whoa, this is really fun to watch. And, um, and they started that way again. And... Um, you know, it's it's contagious when, when guys share the ball. Our, our point guards had zero turnovers tonight, Anthony and uh, Eric, and that's terrific. And uh, so we're just doing a lot of good things, and we keep getting a little bit better. Um, but I just, you know, when the game was on the line, I just thought our, our execution there at the end was, was really, really good. And uh, so it's good to see. So just keep plugging. Just keep trying to get better. We There's some things that we can learn. Ball screen defense and boxing out in the second half, we did do a great job with it. We can learn from film and hopefully carries over and we do a better job on Sunday. Do you think that last Tuesday scare against Nebraska helped you guys yeah. in the second half? Yeah. Maybe not, not falter like you did last week? Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. I, I think we were locked in. I, I, I think we played well. We played much better than we played last week. Um, 
and uh, we played with more poise, um, and you know our communication was better between coaches and players and all that kind of stuff. So it was just. Yeah, we were much better tonight. Got to give Northwestern a lot of credit to hang around and play the way they played really well. Coach, uh, obviously Anthony's a big part of this team, and I'm sure you get a lot of questions about him. But looking at this season, what has stood out about him the most in your mind? I mean, he's had big, big shots, and now he's yeah. eighth on the all-time scoring list. What has stood out about him? Um, and I, I just think it comes down to leadership. That's really the difference. Um, you know, I think Anthony late in the year really learned how to play last year, learned how to play the game the right way. And he was still a really good player before that. But there comes a point where you have to do what the team needs every possession, right? Whether it's scoring, whether it's passing, whether it's defending. And he's got to that point. So Anthony's all about winning. Anthony's leadership on and off the floor is great. Um, tonight when we needed a big play, he made – Big plays. We got to the foul line. So, and he's and he's just constantly communicating and talking and you know making guys making guys better. Andy Becker, when you look at a guy like Pat Spencer, just yeah. the, the way he's gone from D1 across to you know Big Ten basketball, what yeah. stands up to you most about that transition and how he's handled it? Uh, one, how confident he is as a person, and I, I know I talk to Tillman all the time. I think lacrosse and basketball are very similar. And you'll see, he's got the ball. He's a great passer with the ball above his head, like he's got the stick working, you know. Um, and what an athlete, golly. I mean, I was blown away at third place. I wasn't prepared for what kind of athlete he was going to be. I mean, because we have some really good athletes, and he sticks. He really stuck out there. So I see why he dominated the way he did. Um, he's a good player. Yeah, he missed some shots for us tonight, but he was. He's a hard guard. And he's a tough kid. Uh, Coach Jalen is a rebound away from a 2020 yeah. game, nine straight double double. Is, yeah. is this the Jalen you were expecting coming into this year, or was anything surprising you at this point? Uh, he's he's actually doing even better than I imagined um, this year, uh, and even two months ago, you know, in December, um, I wasn't sure we could get to this so fast, and he's just so confident, um, and I was really hoping to get. 2020, they made the shot there at the end, and um, but uh, no, he just keeps growing defensively. He just does so much for us on the defensive end, and then offensively, he really helps us face the floor. And then tonight, he was really good around the basket, which was great to see too. So, and he's become a pretty good passer. You know, we're really working on when big guys are running at him, him driving the ball and making plays for himself or other people. So, we're still evolving. You know, there's a big step. You know, we can still get a lot better before the year's over. And Sticks is working at it. He wants to be great. Um, with Dante, I think this is now like his fourth straight games for him, where he's pretty good. Um, even with the foul trouble today, yeah. I mean, how, how much? What does he add to you on both ends when he's? Yeah. Like well, he, he had some silly fouls tonight, but he, Dante can really drive the ball. And we're just trying to encourage him to be more of a driver. Not always to shoot it, but pass, because he can really pass. And, uh, you know, he got the first bucket of the game he drove. And he's worked really hard on the shot. And we talked about it as a team the other day. I was like, put a play in. I said, we got to get Dante more shots. You know, we got to get him more open looks, because he can shoot. He's kind of, he was kind of an afterthought for us. Like, he was just trying to figure out, oh, my gosh, here we are playing in the Big Ten. And now he's become a real steady player for us and a guy that I think can like sticks grow offensively um, uh, for us. But his toughness is what he really brings to us. But he can score. I mean, he's a big time scorer. So he can score off the drill. He can score off shooting threes. He's the only one that made a three force in the second half. So it's great. And uh, he seems fresh. He seems in a good good, good spot right now. Uh, Eric and Aaron, the shot wasn't there, but they're still contributing. What do you say about them that even the shot's not there, they can still get it done? Yeah, they didn't panic. They didn't let it affect their game. Uh, I think Eric got a little frustrated. We missed the layup there. Um, cause that's his move. Um, the good thing is that we can win by double figures, and those two shoot the ball the way they shot it. So, um, you know, Eric, Aaron, Aaron made a big one in the first half. Um, kind of got us going. But uh, I just want guys to relax. I just want to relax, have fun, and 
you know, start, you know, I, I keep thinking our best basketball is still ahead of us and we play pretty well. So hopefully uh, it is for them, but no panic out of them. Um, and our guys just continue to play with poise and they didn't let those shots affect the rest of the game. Last one, please, Dave. Thank you. Zach would have had me out of here. Three and three, uh, three and three in the league. Uh, uh, you have a two game lead with five to go. Understanding that you're still not, you don't want to look ahead too much. Yeah. You know, how do you look at what's happened uh, from that 3-3 January three three yeah. stand there? Well, I'll say it's real simple. We're playing with confidence. We're making maybe a couple more shots a game, and we're not turning the ball. We've had one bad game in this stretch, turnover-wise. It was Nebraska and only at 17. That's why it was close. We'd had 17 tonight, we might have lost. So that's really the difference. Um, we're not going to get caught up in ourselves because we're at Ohio State, we're at Minnesota, Michigan State at home, at Rutgers, Michigan. And Ohio State and Michigan are back to playing the way they were playing. So we got to lock in, get better, and do the best we can. But it's, it's nice to be on top of it. Thanks, Coach.